Today, you're going to learn everything you need to know about smoking a brisket on the Big Green Egg. Let's get started. I'm Rob D'Amico with Big Green Egg, and today I have two briskets sitting in front of me. One is a full packer. What that means is you have the flat and the point. The higher end here is a point, and it's where the two muscles come together. We'll show you that here in a second. Right here is the flat. This is the flat where it's just the flat. It's the points already cut off of it. So how do you pick one of these when you go to the grocery store? You have two options basically when you go to a regular grocery store. You're gonna have the choice or prime. My opinion, go with the prime. And if you can, go get something like from Cow Steaks or Snake River Farms, a really higher end Wagyu premium version of the brisket because the fat content in there and the marbling is gonna be much higher, giving you more flavor to the meat. So if you go choice, you get a little less of that and sometimes those are not as forgiving when you have the moisture in it because it'll get tougher because it doesn't have the, the, the fat content in there. So you gotta be careful with that. When you go with choice, choice sometimes doesn't give you the same results over and over. When you do a prime, you get that because of the moisture already in there. So, but there are ways to combat that. You can spray it uh, throughout your cook, and we'll get into all that here in a second because there are many methods. You can broil it, you can uh, bake it, you can roast it, but today we're gonna smoke it on the big green egg. All right, so I told you how to pick the right one. Again, prime, that's the one you really wanna go for, and uh, you wanna make sure there's great marbling in here. You can see it in here that it has a lot of good marbling, a good fat content on there. We're getting into that in a second with trimming. Uh, but to talk about the muscle itself, it's basically the superficial and deep uh, pectoral muscles on, a, on cows. So when you have the cattle, they don't have a collarbone like we do. So a lot of that weight is 60% uh, of their weight when they're walking around comes through that muscle. So it's gotta have a lot of connective tissue in there. So that is in there, it's a tough, piece of uh, meat. So what you have to do is in this case, we're going to low and slow cook this thing uh, and we're going to smoke it around 225 and it'll take about 12 to 14 hours here. This is a 12 pound brisket here and when we trim it, it'll get down closer to 10 and this flat right here is about 10 pounds. When we trim this, this will probably be about nine pounds, uh, maybe a little higher because we don't have that much to take off of this one. This one's already pretty much trimmed out. Uh, we do got to take some of the silver skin off that you'll see here in a second. Uh, so let's get started with trimming this. I'm going to start with the packer first. Um, and on the front here, you can see that we do have some fat. We're just going to get rid of all this fat and the silver skin. This is going to take a little bit, but you can see by the magic of television and videos that we'll uh, run through this pretty quick, but it is a process that does take a little longer and that's okay because you want to make sure you get all this off of there. You'll see that some of this fat is a lot thinner and it's like silver skin. We're just going to get rid of that. But then you're going to find some fat that's really hard and tough. You want to get all that off of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start cutting that out and getting it down to where you can see the meat. And this is the fat that sits between the point and the flat. So we just want to get rid of this fat out of here. You can use a regular chef's knife if you want, but I like using a boning knife because it bends a little bit, gives you a little better um, angles with the silver skin. It's easier to get under there and take off really thin pieces, which is really good because then you're not taking chunks out. But don't worry, if you get down to some of these spots and you, you take a little chunk out, it's okay. It's not going to ruin anything. You don't have to be perfect on this. We're not cooking this for a competition. Um, so this is just for the backyard. You don't have to be perfect with it. All right, now you can see once we get all this fat out of the way, you can see that there's a, obviously a grain pattern right here. You can see the grain going this way. And sometimes when you get at the end of the cook and there's a lot of bark on here, you won't be able to see which way the grain is going as easily. It's, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. So here's a pro trick for you. You follow that grain and obviously you cut across the grain. So we're gonna cut a chunk off of this side right here just to show that that side is where we're actually gonna start our cutting on the flat because the grain goes this way. Just a little pro tip for you. Then the other one is, you see this right here, you get a little of this 
discoloration in the fat and meat right here, we're going to trim that off as well. Plus it helps square everything off and then you can see the actually really good marbling in the meat and also gives you a better view of the fat cap in there, which I'll show you here in a second. I mean, just look at how, mar how much marbling is in there. That is going to be delicious. So you can see it in here. We're just cutting off this discoloration. Exposing more of the fat cap, which we're, gonna about, we're about ready to flip over and start cutting that. Some people like to leave it on, but you'll feel that there's hard spots in it. You want to get the hard spots out. Um, and then the, with the softer side, which is getting on the thinner side of the meat, you want to get that down to about a quarter inch. And some people say an eighth, but I like to keep it on a quarter. Again, I'm going to cook this so it renders down. And don't worry if you see a spot like that where you went too far, that's okay. Again, we're not doing this as a competition. This is for the backyard and we're having some friends and family over. So it does not have to be perfect. Trust me, they're going to enjoy it because the egg is going to guarantee you that. All right, now that we got all of our brisket trimmed up, we got the packer all trimmed out. We got some of the fat that's been connected in here. We also did our corner cut so we know where the grain is. We also did it on our flat. Got all the nice silver skin off of there. We kept some of the fat on the back on this one, but this one's pretty good and trimmed up. So we're gonna add these on the egg. First though, we're gonna get them seasoned. Basically when you season these, you only have to use salt and pepper. We got a little half and half, 50-50 salt and pepper, and I also put a little garlic powder in there as well. So I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna coat it really thick. But again, this is mostly just salt, 50-50, salt and pepper. I'm just going to get on there. You can put some olive oil on here if you wanted to. We're not going to. We don't have to. You want to get a good coating. You want to get both sides and you want to get the edges. So we're going to do that. You can see when I was cutting the fat, it's about a quarter of an inch. Eighth of an inch is good. This is ni the nice soft fat. It's going to render nice. There's no tough spots. I did get a little close right here, but that's okay. Again, this is not a competition brisket. This is to enjoy in the backyard with family and friends. Almost done seasoning these. And then we're going to set it up on the egg indirect at 225 degrees. And I do have my egg genius set up so it'll help run and keep that temperature for me throughout the entire cook because then I can set it and have the meat go off with an alarm at about 165 because at that point, I'm now going to wrap it once it gets to that point and uh, let it finish the rest of the cook. We'll get into that a little bit more here in a second. Let me get these all finished here. Get the sides. Okay, that looks about good. So now, again, we're gonna stick this on the egg. We're set up with some uh, pecan smoking chips and chunks you can put in there. I prefer chunks if you can get them uh, because they're a bigger piece of wood that's gonna sit in there and smoke. You don't have to add anything because we are, with the Big Green Egg Charcoal, we do have oak and hickory already in there. You can add mesquite if you want. To me, it's a little, it's too much if you ask me. I'm not a guy that likes a lot of smoke, but I will add some pecan, a little sweetness in there to give it a little taste. We're also gonna put in we have our indirect set up here with our expander basket, our half moon baking stones, and we also have the aluminum foil pan in here. And I'm just gonna pour some beer in here because that's gonna help keep moisture in the egg and in the meat. But again, this fat's gonna render right into this beer. Oh, and this is gonna taste absolutely fantastic. So let me get these on here. Beautiful. I'm gonna let those cook to about an internal temperature of about 165. Then we're gonna remove them and wrap them in our Big Green Egg Butcher paper. 
So after you're done with all your meat clippings, you can either take the big fatty chunks and use them, render them down and use it like butter, or you can take the parts that have the meat on it and ground it up for hamburger, which is great. If you've ever had brisket added to the hamburger, oh, it is fantastic. So that's another tip you can use. Also, if you look right here, I have our disposable cutting board, which is great because now I can take everything here, get it out of the way, and it's pretty much clean. I'll just have to wipe off the salt and pepper that came off because I didn't put the meat directly on the countertop. So this is a great uh, accessory to have is the disposable cutting board. And after when we're done, we're going to use the same, not the same board, but a disposable cutting board, and we're going to cut right on it because it helps keep all the juices so when I serve it, I can pour the juices from the board onto the, the meat, which is going to be great. Let's uh, let this cook. Smoke slow and low, 250 degrees, 225, somewhere in there. Egg Genius is going to keep us up to temp and it's going to keep an eye on the meat and let us know when it's all ready to get wrapped. Our brisket has been on our egg about seven, eight hours right now at about 225. We kept it nice and slow and low using our Egg Genius. Right now we're going to use some of our pink butcher paper. We got it laid out here. We're going to transfer this, but I got to make sure that the briskets are up to temp at about 164 to 168, somewhere in between there. We just want to make sure that the, uh, uh, the temperature is ready to be pulled and wrapped and we got a nice bark on this. So let's take a look. Burp the egg. Going to use our instant read thermometer. And we are at 165, 7, nope, 161.3. That's good for me. I'm going to use our silicone mitts here because now I can just take the meat and grab it right off the grill. Oh, yeah, listen to that. Put it right here in the middle. Don't forget, it's got to be nice and tight. We want to make this wrap this nice and tight. I'm going to come back and do one more sheet. sure it's on there nice and tight. Roll up the edge. We're going to set this back on the egg. We're going to do the same for the second one. Okay, now that our second one's wrapped, we're going to put them back on here. And again, once they get to around 167, 165, somewhere in there, you get to what's called a stall. And that stall is the opportunity you want to take to wrap it all in there, keep all that moisture inside, and let it finish its cook to about 205, and then we'll check it. So let's let this smoke about another few hours here, and we'll come back and check it when it's up to 205. Okay, we've been keeping an eye on our brisket. We're about 203, 205. I'm going to check the temperature. And if we're sitting at that temperature, what you like to do, and I'm going to show you this, is using the instant read thermometer. You stick it. Oh, yeah, look at that. 203, 79, 204. This one's ready to pull. So we're going to pull this one out. I'm just set it here for right now. Shut the egg. What we're going to do is we're going to put these in a cooler, let them rest for about 40 minutes, and then we're going to slice into them. Okay, we just pulled these out of the cooler. They've been in there for about 40 minutes. Now we're going to open this up, and we're, they're still going to be hot. Uh, we're going to open this up and then cut into them. And today we're using our disposable cutting board because we don't want all the juices running all over the place. I actually want to collect them because when I start to serve this, put it on the plate, I'm going to pour those juices on top, and all I got to do is pick up my nice disposable cutting board here and it'll dump the, the um, all the fluid onto the plate. So let's open this up and see what we got here. This is like Christmas Day. Oh my gosh, look at that bark and the jiggle. Whew, and it is still very hot. 
Look at it jiggling. That's good stuff right there. And a nice bark on there. You can see the grain. So we're going to cut going across the grain. Look at that. That's beautiful. Oh yeah. So here is our flat that we had. And this is our packer. You can see we're going to cut this off right here and it'll literally slice down in here. That'll take the point off and that'll leave your flat right here. Um, and then we're going to serve this up and we're going to do burnt ends with the, the point here. So um, let me just get started on this one here because I'm just going to cut it down right where the seam is. That's why I cut out all that fat because now I know exactly where the point separates from the flat. And you can see it's that simple. Well, look how juicy that is. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. So we're going to put this one aside. And then we're going to slice these up. You can see it right here. This is your grain. And this is where we're going to cut right here. And you want a nice pencil thick slice. And I can tell you that this is still very, very warm. I don't know if you can hear those juices, but that is incredible. Here's another way to tell that it's done. Right there. You see that? That's what you want. You want to have that drape over, and that tells you that this is going to be nice and tender. Okay, while we finish cutting these, I want to remind everybody, you can go to our website for great tips and recipes at BigGreenEgg.com. You also got tips and techniques there with our blog. You can check those out as well. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And again, all of this can be found at BigGreenEgg.com. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned all about brisket today.